Aloha, welcome to Shake Up Learning's Summer Learning Series. This presentation is titled Empowering Tomorrow's Creators, AI Tools for the Modern Classroom. My name is Michael Fercano II, and by day I serve as a K through six design and technology teacher at Iolani School in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm also a Google for Education certified trainer, a code.org computer science discoveries facilitator, and I love being an ambassador of many of my favorite ed tech tools, such as CoSpace's EDU, some of the newer AI tools like Magic School, School AI and CurePod, and many others. In this presentation, I'm gonna focus on three main things. We're gonna start by looking at a really great resource to help us assess AI tools as we dive deeper into exploring how these tools might benefit us as teachers and how our students might be able to use them in the classroom as well. Then we'll take a look at some AI tools that are available today. Some of my favorites, some that I'm really interested in exploring uh, in my classrooms uh, next school year. And then we'll wrap up the presentation by looking at a couple of AI tools that are on the horizon. Let's start by looking at a resource that might help us assess AI tools. Now this resource comes from TCEA. It's not mine, I had no hand in creating it, but I came across it recently, and I think it's a really great way to look very closely at uh, AI tools that we're interested in using in our classrooms, and it's a great way to assess them and determine whether uh, they'll work for us as teachers and our students, and if they're appropriate to use. Uh, this TCEA resource is a, it's, uh, it's two things. It's a teacher rubric, and it's a checklist. And both of them check for four main uh, um, things related to these tools. One is uh, the tool's relevancy to us as teachers and our students and our classrooms. Um, their policies around student data privacy. Um, their, the tool's ease of learning. And the kinds of support that the tool provides to teachers and students. The checklist that you can see in this uh, front picture here is a, a great, it's, it's the, the first thing you wanna use if you're gonna look at this resource and consider using it. It's great for quick screening. It's a checklist. You can, you know, as you're exploring a tool, check the box on whether it, it, it applies or it kind of applies or there's nothing really related to that focus in the checklist. And um, if you get a lot of yeses uh, and, and kindas, then it might be something you wanna look more closely at, does using the rubric for deeper evaluation. So feel free to check this out. I have a link in the slide deck here uh, after the presentation and see if it uh, if it's helps you and supports you in further uh, exploring AI tools. Now let's take a look at some AI tools that exist today. These are tools that I find really interesting that I think might have a potential use for me and my students in my design and technology class. I teach kindergarten through sixth grade, about eight to 900 students um, and I see all students throughout the school year in my, um, in my design and technology class. Let's, take a, let's first take a look at some AI image generators, some of the most popular AI tools out there. The first one I want to uh, show you is Adobe Firefly. Uh, of course, it's, so it's an image, AI image generator designed and created by Adobe. Uh, it has its own standalone web-based tool, firefly.adobe.com. But they're also building it into other Adobe apps like Adobe Express that some of you might be familiar with and some of their, uh, their more robust apps like Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, but as a standalone pro uh, product, it's um, a very easy to use text based image generator. You give it a prompt, uh, it, it generates four pictures. Um, but it's got, uh, it also has some other really great built in tools like Generative Expand where you can add to the picture and, and uh, give it more detail. Uh, you can generate a fill. So if there's something missing from the picture or you forgot to include something in your prompt, you can highlight a specific area in that image and then use um, a, you can further prompt it to add to the existing picture as well. Uh, something to look forward to, I'm not gonna showcase this a little later, but uh, what they are promising uh, coming soon are generative audio and video tools as well by Adobe. So check out Adobe Firefly, it's a really great source. Uh, you can set up a free Adobe account, you get 25 credits per month, one credit per image generation. Uh, my school has an, an, um, an Adobe school license and what I found out recently is that my school Adobe account has 400 credits 
uh, per month. So if you're in Adobe school or a district that has access to Adobe, uh, the Adobe suite, uh, you might want to check out Adobe Firefly and see if you have the same amount of credits that I do. I was quite surprised by that. So that's, that's a really great opportunity for me and my students as an Adobe school. Uh, the next image uh, gener generative tool that I want to share with you is Google's. They have one called ImageFX and it's part of a broader suite of tools called the AI Test Kitchen. These are all sort of beta apps that Google has uh, opened up to the public for use and of course using it means that you're helping to train the AI model and you're, you're giving it feedback and it's learning from us as we continue to use it. But one of them is ImageFX and it's very similar to, Ado to Adobe. It's a text-based image generator. You, you, you give it a prompt, text-based prompt, and it'll give you four images, uh, four you know, slightly differing images and then you can, um, you can uh, you can, they also have uh, an, an, opportunity, an option to edit the image, uh, just like in Adobe uh, Firefly where they have a generative fill. ImageFX has a very similar feature where you can, you can generate your picture and then if you want to add to it, you can edit that picture and use further text prompting to add and, and change the picture, which I think is really cool. Also, one thing I really love about ImageFX is it has um, descriptive words at the bottom that you could add to your prompt. So if you're, in, if you're like me, I'm not really good at, at prompt crafting. I struggle coming up with you know, the specific words you might need to really um, uh, hone in on that, that you know, kind of picture or content that you're looking for in the AI tool. Um, but ImageFX gives you uh, descriptive words that you could cycle through, you could refresh and find the right ones, and then you could click them and add them directly into your prompt to further expand on, on the, the kind of pictures you're, you're trying to create. And um, another uh, image generator, this one's very specific. It's not like the other two. It's a 360 degree image generator. And currently it's, it's um, a tool by Rosebud AI. It's uh, free to access. You don't have to log in like you do the other ones. So you don't have to have an account um, you just type in your text prompt, it generates a 360 degree image, which you can then download and use in uh, other great virtual reality creation tools like CoSpaces and ThingLink um, to, uh, to create those, those VR experiences for others. This one's called ManyWorlds.Run, and uh, the, there's a link there that you can, uh, you, can, you, uh, you can give it a try. All right, so you know, with image generators, I wanted to share some ideas uh, that I came across, some I came up myself, oops, that um, might uh, hopefully inspire you and find use cases for how these image generators can be used in your classroom. So one is uh, probably one of the most obvious, giving students opportunities to create illustrations for their stories and poems. Um, another might be creating the characters and the settings for those stories, uh, coming up with concept art for um, the, uh, those, those um, illustrations. Um, image generators can help create and design posters, presentations. Uh, it can help create the images within those posters and presentations as well. Um, it's great for exploring art styles. Uh, Adobe Firefly specifically has filters where you can, you can click and choose different art styles and it'll It'll uh, generate images based on that style of art. And so um, using tools like that in an art class to explore styles and abstract concepts might be really useful and helpful in helping students learn in those types of classrooms. And uh, creating personalized avatars for various tools, various projects. All right, so moving on to AI uh, music generators. Um, similar to ImageFX, it's part of the AI test kitchen uh, with Google, uh, it's called Music Effects, and um, it's a it's a text-based music generator. So you give it a, a, a prompt, um, and it'll generate instrumental music. Um, it also does the same thing as Image Effects, where it, it can it gives you a bank of descriptive words. So if you struggle coming up with ways to describe the type of music that you want, there's a really great helpful bank of of those descriptive words at the bottom that you could cycle through. Um, you, you click them and you can add them into your prompt and then you can choose from a drop down list to help you really customize and further um, hone in on that, that prompt. 
A few other uh, really great built-in features to music effects is something called DJ mode. So rather than typing in your text prompt, you can switch to DJ mode and you can add in like instruments and musical and, and like styles of music uh, in like a, um, a list and you could change like how much of that instrument you want factored into your, your generation of, of music. Uh, there's like a sliding toolbar for uh, like all the different instruments you have in your prompt and all the different uh, uh, musical styles. Um, so give, give DJ mode a try, it's, it's, it's really fun. Um, if you, again, if you struggle with prompt crafting, DJ mode is a much easier tool to use to craft the music that you want. And then some other really cool things in music effects is track length. So you can designate whether you want the length of your musical track to be 30 seconds, 50 seconds, or 70 seconds. And then there's um, a looping feature. It's like a checkbox you can turn on that will cause the music uh, to loop, uh, to be designed uh, in a way that it loops very nicely and seamlessly. Um, I've seen some great, great use cases where teachers and students are using this to, to generate like the intro and outro music and the background music for podcasting, for video projects, things like that. Um, so great, great music generate, generative tool. Um, a, a favorite of mine though is um, Suno. So Suno is uh, it's text text based prompting, uh, but what it does is it takes your prompt, creates lyrics and then generates a song with a voice that sings those lyrics uh, as, as part of the music. So it's really cool. It generates instrumentals and vocals with your text-based prompt and uh, gives you the lyrics that it creates as well. Um, and when you create a song with Suno, you get two versions, two slightly different versions um, that you can download as a video file, you can download it as an audio file and use it in other projects. Suno is working on a teacher program. Um, there's a link here on the slide deck and on uh, uh, the website. And uh, if you're interested in using Suno, you can sign up for a free account. Um, a free account gives you, I think, 50 credits and one song generation is 10 credits. But if you're interested in using Suno in your classroom, there's a form that you can fill out uh, to share, to show teacher interest, and they'll hook you up with 5,000 credits in your account. So give that, um, give that a try, and if it's something you're really interested in trying out with your students, creating some fun songs for the classroom, uh, there's a great way to get lot, a lot more credits. So check out that link in the slide deck there when you have a chance. Now, um, music generators in the classroom, here's, here's a few ideas. So one, uh, just like with uh, image generators in art class, music generators in a music class can be a great way to have students experiment with musical genres, tempos, and different kinds of instruments. Uh, gives them an opportunity to create original music and supports their songwriting efforts. And they can generate background music for podcasts, videos, and, and, and other projects that they're creating. It's also a great way for exploring music styles as well. And they can learn about musical structures. All right, so another uh, type of AI generator, I only have one to share with you, uh, but it is a AI 3D model generator. And this one comes to us from Luma AI. The tool's called Genie. And uh, it's free to use. You, uh, you, you can set up an account and log in to that account. And then it uses a text-based prompt to generate a 3D model, which is really fascinating. I mean, these, to create a three-dimensional model, based on um, some words, uh, it's, it's showcasing the power of AI. Um, and then once you generate a model in Luma AI Genie, there's an option to uh, transform it into a high resolution model, which really sharpens the colors and um, cleans up the lines and the textures. Um, and then you can download that 3D model in a variety of file formats. Um, if you're familiar with like 3D printing or 3D, uh, 3D modeling, through various um, apps, uh, the the most popular file types are um, are included in in, in Genie. Um, now, uh, using three D model generators in the classroom, here's here's a couple of ideas. So, one, giving uh, opportunities for students to visualize characters. So maybe they're reading a story or they're creating a story, and they want to help. They want help visualizing their characters in a three dimensional view. Um, Give, uh, have them give Luma AI Genie a try. See if they can come up with a prompt to describe that character and see what uh, Luma uh, Genie uh, creates. 
Um, great way to design props and architectural models for various projects. Uh, create um, art installations uh, for 3D printing. So you can generate a 3D model in Genie, export it, and then move it into a 3D printer and actually 3D print something that was created by AI. And then uh, create characters and objects for for um, game design projects. So if your students are creating digital games, um, you can use Luma AI Genie to create the, the three-dimensional models for those, those game projects. All right, uh, the last uh, tool I want to showcase that's available uh, uh, to, to use is an AI coding and game design tool. Uh, this one's uh, from the same company that made that, that 360 image generator that I showed you earlier called uh, Many Worlds. This one is called Rosebud AI Game Maker. And what it does is it, it's, um, it's a, an AI chatbot and you can have a conversation with it and ask it to help you create a game. And it'll generate the code for that game based on your conversation with it. Uh, there are, there are, are ready-to-go templates for creating 2D games and for creating interactive AI chatbot characters. Um, and uh, what I found when I use it, I've actually got an example game here that I made called It's Bedtime, Clean Up Your Room. And it's a, gr it's, it's a very simple 2D game where you're a character using the arrow keys and you're, you're moving around your room trying to pick up all the trash and the dirty clothes and the snack wrappers before your mom comes and yell at you uh, before bedtime. And um, as I was using uh, Game Maker to create this game, uh, it does a really good job of explaining what it's doing in the code and what it's changing as I'm asking it questions and asking it to, to tweak this or change that or add, add this feature to my game. Uh, but it does a really good job of explaining. And I found that early on in the game making process with this tool, I was relying on the tool to do the coding for me because I don't have coding experience. Um, but later on in the process, uh, as I became more familiar and more comfortable with um, using the game maker, I found that its explanations were enough for me to go into the code and make the changes myself rather than relying on the AI chatbot to make those changes for me. And that's because, again, it does a really good job of explaining what needs to happen, what needs to change in the code, and where to look for those changes to be made in the code that I felt comfortable enough again later on to make those changes myself as opposed to relying heavily on the AI chatbot. So check it out. Um, it's a really, I think it's a really great way to introduce AI and coding to students and give them an opportunity to, to learn from the, uh, the AI um, as they're designing a game. Now uh, using something like this in a classroom, great opportunities for creating interactive stories so they can take a story they're creating or a story that, they're, that they've read and use the, uh, the, the game maker to, to turn it into a game. Um, they could, uh, it's a great way to introduce uh, coding concepts uh, by having them build simple games, maybe similar to games that they play themselves uh, while learning how to code. A uh, great way to gamify learning. So if they're learning uh, something in a particular subject, uh, see if they could create an, an educational game based on that learning concept in your classroom. And then again, it's a great way to develop coding skills, to introduce computational thinking skills as well. Now, let me share some AI tools that are on the horizon. These I find really fascinating, and I think they're, they're tools that we should really keep our eye on as teachers. So the first one, um, jumping back to Google's AI Test Kitchen, so they have ImageFX, they have MusicFX, uh, but one that they've showcased but is not currently available yet is video effects. And that is using a text-based prompt to generate um, uh, very highly detailed videos. And it's really, uh, really amazing. Um, yeah, so uh, feel free to click the link. There's a wait list that you can join if it's something you want to try out for yourself. And eventually when they release video effects, they'll, they'll do a slow rollout based on their wait list. Um, it might be really, uh, they, recently they showcased um, a famous actor and director, I believe, that's using it to create a movie, which I think is fascinating. I mean, there's some concerns, but there's also some, a lot of excitement and interest in what AI can offer uh, uh, video production. Another one is Notebook LM. Uh, so Notebook LM is already available. It's a tool provided by Google. Uh, you can access it with your Google account. 
And uh, it's, it's an AI chatbot, but what, what it allows you to do is you can upload your resources, your files, into your notebook LM uh, 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 notebook, as they call it. So, for example, if, you're, if you need help studying for a physics test, you can take your, your physics notes from class, the presentation that your teacher might share with you, some videos, some PDFs related to those physics topics. You can upload those files into your notebook, LM notebook, and uh, it'll reference those files as you have a conversation with the built-in chatbot to help you learn those, those concepts. But what's really cool is what they're adding to Notebook LM soon. So let's take a look at this video really quick, and uh, you'll you'll get a sneak peek at as to how Notebook LM works currently, and what they're they're looking to add to it in the near future. Let me show you. So here we are in Notebook LM. You can load it up with all the materials here on the left. In this notebook, I've been using it with my younger son, and I've added some of his science worksheets, a few slide decks from his teacher and even an open source textbook full of charts and diagrams. With <clears throat> 1.5 Pro, it instantly creates this notebook guide with a helpful summary and can generate a study guide, an FAQ, or even quizzes. But for my son, Jimmy, he really learns best when he can listen to something. So we've prototyped a new feature with Gemini, and it's called Audio Overviews. Notebook LM is going to take all the materials on the left as input and output them into a lively science discussion personalized for him. Let's take a listen. So let's, uh, let's dive into physics. What's on deck for today? Well, uh, we're starting with the basics. Force and motion. Okay. And that, of course, means we have to talk about Sir Isaac Newton and his three laws of motion. Ah, uh, yes. The foundation for understanding how objects move and interact. Ah, uh, yes. This is where multimodal really shines. Now, it generated this audio discussion based on that text material. And what's amazing is that my son and I can join into the conversation and steer it whichever direction we want. When I tap, join. Hold on, we have a question. What's up, Josh? Yeah, can you give my son Jimmy a basketball example? Hey, Jimmy! That's a fantastic idea. Basketball is actually a great way to visualize force and motion. Let's break it down. Okay, so first, imagine a basketball just sitting there on the court. It's not moving, right? That's because all the forces acting on it are balanced. The downward pull of grab... Pretty cool, right? I'm back. Isn't that cool? Let's take a look at another tool. So that's Notebook LM, uh, pretty fascinating. You saw like in the new feature they're adding, um, just starting uh, the tool uh, uh, initiated a conversation that the AI was having with itself based on the resources that it was, it was referencing in the notebook. And then you can join the conversation and it's, uh, it seems very user friendly, very conversational. So a really cool feature to take a look at. If you're not familiar with Notebook LM, definitely check it out. Uh, in its current form, and then stay tuned for that new audio output feature that you're adding. Um, the next uh, AI tool that I want to showcase is something that, that Google is also working on, uh, and they're building uh, an AI lesson builder tool into Google Classroom. There's not much information on that I could find, but this video that they released a couple of weeks ago gives a very quick sneak peek. Let's, 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 uh, let's take a look. Through a new pilot program in Google Classroom, we're working closely with hundreds of educators to create tools that simplify the lesson planning process. We are learning how to help teachers discover new ideas and unique activities, find engaging materials, and easily adjust their lessons to meet every student where they are. All right, so that was just a really quick sneak peek. We got a few screenshots there, but uh, they're, again, they're looking at building in AI tools for teachers in Google Classroom. I'm a Google Classroom user for my fourth through sixth grade. If you are too, something that you might wanna uh, keep your eye on. They're currently uh, testing it in classrooms and they're calling it AI Labs in Classroom. Um, and it's, it's building Gemini AI into Google Classroom to help teachers develop lesson plans. 
which I think is really fascinating, might be a really useful tool for teachers in the near future. Through a new all right, guys. Through a new that, pilot uh, program. Yeah, sorry. That wraps up my presentation for the Shake Up Learning Summer Learning Series. My name is Michael Fricano II. You can find me on social media at EdTechNocation. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the presentation, but on every slide throughout this, uh, this video, if you look down in the bottom right corner, there's a bit.ly link there, bit.ly slash creators dash AI. And that'll take you to my presentation website, which has this uh, slide deck embedded, as well as links to all of the different tools that I referenced. And I didn't point it out earlier also, but if you, uh, if you go back in the slide deck or in the video, you might have noticed that there are also, I've also included links to privacy policies, uh, terms of use and user agreements for uh, a majority of the tools that require you to log in. Those are things that you'll definitely wanna take a look at, especially if you're gonna use that AI tool um, assessment rubric and checklist. That's uh, one of the key factors in assessing tools is how uh, these tools are using data, uh, how, do, how do teachers and students get access to, this, to, to the tools, uh, those kinds of things. But I included links to those as well in case you have trouble finding them. Well, enjoy the rest of your summer learning series and uh, find me online at EdTechNocation. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to uh, engage and have conversations with all of you about these um, amazing, fascinating AI tools. Aloha.